and I really started to feel like, hey, I can I can really do this. And I felt that I felt that I was close um, because, you know, obviously it's more than it takes more than technical skill to find a job. Obviously, you know, got to have soft skills, got to have um, know how to network, stuff like that. And once I figured that out and realized that I was going all in, I figured, OK, look, I had already told my wife between me and her that this is my last year at the warehouse. And yeah, pretty much when I told my manager, that was like, OK, I got to do it. Last week, I talked to Caleb, who is now a front end developer, mostly self taught, and he later on joined a boot camp and got his first job. He was kind enough to talk about his past, his experience, and how he started his career. Hope you will like our conversation. So, what happened like when a new developer, like they've been like doing boot camp or they've been self taught, right? And they try to find the first job and they couldn't find. I have a few friends, they've been trying for like year or two but they couldn't find a job so i was just thinking like what what is the real cause like why someone who's been and i know they're good developers because i work with them in small projects why they couldn't find a job and then i thought i remembered you like you've been sharing your progress on twitter and then i was like i should ask you like i i didn't know much about you so first of all if you can just uh, introduce yourself so that everyone can even i know like what was your background and how did you start it? Okay, so yeah, I'm Caleb. Uh, I'm down here in Tampa, Florida. And I started to code back in the beginning of 2018. It's definitely not been a consistent journey. I've taken two year-long breaks from then until now, or at least until the time that I got hired. And yeah, so my motivation behind it was I just wanted to spend more time with my family in the long run. And at the time when I really made a decision to learn how to code, I was working two jobs and my daughter, she was like six months old and just learned how to sit up on her own. And I had to work all day, the day that she learned how to do that. So, you know, I was thinking bigger picture and it's definitely been a journey, but yeah, pretty much uh, the big turning point for me personally, it was this year when um, 100 devs started their cohort. Um, I'm sure you've heard of 100 yeah, devs. Have, yes. Okay. Yeah. So the first time I ever heard or seen anything about 100 devs was when I was in the hospital in January, right after my son was born. And he's, he's like seven and a half months now. He's crawling around everywhere. But I just played a video because they were just going through like HTML and CSS at the time. And in my head, I'm like, yeah, I already know HTML and C CSS. And as I was watching it, I was like, wow, I didn't, even though I knew HTML and CSS, I didn't know, know it to that degree. So that's what was the turning point with me. I told my wife um, towards the end of, no, the, the beginning of February, I told her, I said, this is my last year in the warehouse because I felt that I had had a baseline knowledge. I just needed to apply myself. So it was pretty much uh, the rest is history since there. And my official start date for my current job was June 24th. Oh, so you started June 24th this year? Yes. 2022. Okay. I want to go a little back. So you said you started doing or learning code uh, in like 2019, 2020, like two 20, years ago? 2018. 2018 okay and mm -hmm. then you like you didn't pursue this field or like what happened yeah i mean i was pursuing it but it's as you know as many know it is hard yep. <laughs> especially when you're like teaching yourself um mm -hmm. and by self-taught i mean i mean i was still doing i was signed up to a uh, coding phase i don't know if you heard about him but he's real solid but even then like the the learning uh, the platform was good. The materials that I had was good. It's just, it's just hard to keep doing it every day when you still have a lot of other stuff on your plate. So like with me, uh, I was, I'm the main breadwinner for my household. And it's like, you know, most of the time I've, I've had to work two jobs 
to make ends meet because it's it's not as simple as you know sending your kid off to daycare i mean we've never sent our kids to daycare you know that's something that we um i'm not saying that we don't believe in it but for how much it costs i mean you it's, it's like you may as well just stay at home so yeah it just after a while even even after you learn a bit sometimes it's hard to keep that momentum so that's the biggest reason why i took a couple of long breaks and it doesn't take much i mean you know sometimes sometimes the things are coming real smooth and sometimes you just don't see the progress fast enough to really make you keep going at it yeah no no that that was uh like you started something and then because you had to work and then you came back and then you got the job like what how did you change your approach like or what did you do differently this time that got you the job well i i fully committed to it that's the biggest um thing that i could say like before before i even had a job offer i told my manager at the warehouse that i was going to be going by the end of the year oh cuz yeah i mean i and i had been there uh nine and a half years so i mean that's not a big i mean that's a pretty big thing to say it's a pretty big commitment and i mean i felt in my heart that that's what i needed to do i needed to fully commit i need to just go all in and you know from the time of me starting 100 devs to the time that i told my manager uh that i was leaving i had made a pretty significant amount of progress i had really start to learn and understand javascript a lot more um i think it's like just a difference in learning style and i really started to feel like hey i can i can really do this and i felt that i felt that i was close um because you know obviously it's more than it takes more than technical skill to find a job obviously you know got to have soft skills got to have um know how to network stuff like that and once i figured that out and realized that i was going all in i figured okay look i had already told my wife between me and her that this is my last year at the warehouse and yeah pretty much when i told my manager that was like okay i got to do it no that that was really inspiring and i hope like lots of people will take it as an inspiration and I, i'm assuming you have no cs background right so you no. didn't you didn't study computer no. science before you no. did few boot camps so how how long was your boot camp 100 i, I didn't know about like 100 i know like uh, so, trending on twitter like yeah so what, what they're, sti- they're yeah. still they're still going okay and <laughs> they're still going so, so who's the organizer like so we were the based in Florida? um leon leon noel okay or leon noel um i think that's his twitter handle okay um yeah and the twitch channel is learning with leon okay and all of his all of the stuff is on youtube i've actually referred it to a few people who try mm-hmm. to learn and, and yeah it's it's the, it's a commitment obviously coding is this is not something that you can just look no. at for a couple of weeks and get it yes but yeah i would say that his teaching style uh helped me really understand more than what i was doing on my own and and how much is the fees like if someone wants to join them it's free oh it's free so it's like oh that that's that's even better yeah like literally the only the com- yeah, I've, it's was... free everything comes at a cost so yeah. the cost is you being committed to it yeah okay and following through no that that's 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 pretty good yeah that's why it was a uh, all over on twitter uh, mm-hmm. a few months ago and i was like why i'm seeing this hashtag everywhere mhm yeah so it means a lot of people uh they join and uh, but you didn't pay them anything right no not a dime oh man that's good uh <laughs> no that i mean i know few boot camps they charge like $10,000 $20,000 maybe more than that right right and uh but i didn't go to any boot camp or anything but uh, i i work with people and they are very efficient very competent people but i but i see like even though like you 
even go to school or even go to boot camp you need to have i think commitment right that's oh, that's yeah. the main part of the equation which mo- most people don't follow and you have to put the time if you have if you have a two job or even if you have one job and then you have mm-hmm. to do this cohort or a boot camp that might be like 20 or 30 hours a week maybe more than that and i think this is what uh, most people when they start they don't realize like how much effort it takes to get your first job yep okay it's a lot uh how was your interviews so how many jobs have you applied oh um well i actually had one offer that i wound up turning down in april only mm-hmm. because it wasn't right for it wasn't a good fit for my family pay wise mm-hmm. so as much as i wanted to make the jump um i was pretty much getting paid what i was already getting paid um i did if interestingly enough so with the 100 devs uh we don't really apply to jobs like that so there's like a whole um way about going finding your first job and ironically enough the job that i have now so there's a there's a certain part in the the cohort where we actually talk about going and finding the job and the first thing he says is stop applying and he, i mean he has a reason behind it because you know if you look at a lot of these applications on the job boards especially for junior level job openings for one position you may have like a couple of hundred people applying yeah so like what's the odds of your profile or resume being selected out of that group of 200 150 people mm-hmm. and he's like you're better off just uh you know printing out your resume and throwing it in the trash because that's basically what you're doing and but ironically enough the job that i have i applied for i think it was may 5th and i got the offer i think they responded about a month later and uh this was before i applied before him telling us not to apply if, and uh sorry if you if you there's a no to apply how to get the job like some other way like from networking it's it's a it's a networking it's networking so yeah it's a it's networking getting that exposure um sharing your learning process in the open so people know that you uh, are you know know a little bit about code and you're passionate about it and you this is something that you plan on doing for a while Mm-hmm. and i actually landed a few interviews i mean just like anybody i bombed a couple of them <laughs> the first uh no oh, i mean that's a part of <laughs> yeah the the first one that i bombed they had like a little practice assessment where i was like yeah do fizz buzz and i was like yeah anybody could do fizz buzz and then the real thing was like loop through a nested array and i was like man i've never done that before oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean there are so many things uh let's say you do it today and after a week you just forget about it right oh because, yeah because because you didn't practice and that's why like a lot of people they do lead code just like a month or two months they start like few months before the interview so that they have yeah. that practice even though like I think if you are a senior you've been coding for 10 years there will be some maybe easy or basic things which you just can't remember at the mm-hmm. spot and uh uh there was the, i was uh watching a video or I, i was i think i was watching a video where uh you know uh react so react has a core team i think the main guy is like dan abramov I, i if i don't know if i'm pronouncing his name right and uh he's so he's like now at he's like the main person who doing like handling react and when they interviewing him so his interview is like he was at a conference and he was giving some i think on react or something and then facebook was interested in hiring him so you know the facebook procedure is to like they give you like five six rounds and everything so mm-hmm. they gave him like a pretty i think very basic I, i don't remember the question but it was like swapping numbers something like that and he was like i couldn't do it and everyone was like you can do it you can do it and then eventually he did but even at that level when you are like creating libraries which been used by millions of people you can still can't answer simple questions yeah 
that's that's, that's the part. Yeah, that's the part of uh, uh, and I think a lot of companies they they sometimes get too harsh on a candidate. I agree. And so for me, I when I'm taking an interview, I have like set of questions. I never judge person his or her capabilities based on one answer. But I do have like sometimes like one question I ask everyone, and if if any one of them give that answer correct, I was like, you're hired from my end. So you impressed mm-hmm. me. But, yeah. but that's that's like the fun part I have when I'm interviewing, and I think when uh, when I give the interview, so my basic approach is to like get the basics done, and end of the day, if you can't answer it, you can't answer it, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean that's the good point where you say you get the basics done. Um, that's what it all boils down to, in my opinion. Uh, my, um, it's funny because like a week ago, a week or two ago, my boss told me I was having a, a issue with one of my tickets and he helped me out a little bit. He was like, look, he said, I don't remember everything. And he's been coding for longer than I've been alive. So he, he showed me how he does it. Uh, and it was like just something simple. It was like, how do you um, like add add to arrays it was like a simple array dot concat mm-hmm. uh method and he was and he showed me and i was like wow so even though you may know a lot about code and no matter how much you learn i think people are too harsh on themselves when they try to remember every little thing mm-hmm. and i think it's more important to know how to maybe diagnose a problem and figure out what you need for the solution and then go about finding a solution like that. Just like yesterday, I had a um, um, one of my work tickets where I had to, I was messing with some arrays and I had to, I was pulling in data from the API mm-hmm. and it wasn't working how I wanted it to work. So every time I navigate around the app and go to that list, it kept adding to that array and it was getting longer and longer. So in my head, I'm like, dang, it's not supposed to do that. But my first thought was, okay, I need to, I can't have uh, repeated items in the array. Yeah. Something. So even though I don't know how to do that from scratch, like I can't just sit here and like, how, how do you code something to where you're not repeating items in the array? That's, I Googled that. And I mean, I had it working in a few minutes. So it's like, it's a, it's a combination of, uh, like general competency, yeah. uh, definitely fundamentals, knowing or having a good idea of how to solve a problem, you know, what tools and data structures you need to solve it. And if you get stuck, what to search for, because you're not going to remember everything. So, no, th- yeah. That, yeah, I think that's that's the right approach. Okay. Uh, my next question would be the question we started. If someone is not getting traction or they're not getting, interviews or not they're not getting job and they've been doing for like self they, they are not in the boot camp and they're self-taught right they're doing a job and part-time they're just trying to learn javascript html css what advice would you give them so that what do you think they should do so that they can get their first job uh, i would say first off check the resume um because a lot of times if you're not getting traction it could be the resume um second thing if you are getting some interviews just practice um like soft skills and you know communication and really try to be solid on your fundamentals uh there there was a turning point with me where uh once again in the 100 devs in the the there was a section i think it was back in like april or may where they literally had a class strictly for the resume. Mm -hmm. And after I fixed my resume up, I noticed that I was getting a lot more um, invites to do interviews. So yeah, sometimes it's it's almost as simple as the resume. Mm -hmm. So a resume and, you know, also like networking on LinkedIn, you know, talking to different hiring managers, just interacting with people. So. Yeah, uh, one of the interesting thing about you is like you put f- yourself forward on Twitter, like mm-hmm. you're sharing your experience. Uh, and most people they can't do it because like maybe they're shy. They're like, I just feel 
look dumb like what would people think of like what i'm doing so what suggestion do you have for them because they need to have some kind of exposure because that's how like people would can find you right so yeah. what kind of suggestion or what did you tell yourself because uh like because you did it and i think mm-hmm. you did it right and uh, so how can you convince someone to do that well um you want to give yourself any type of advantage you can because it is very difficult to get that first job so something as simple as being more interactive on twitter uh linkedin um like you can't be closed up i mean obviously you can get lucky you may know somebody who has a job opening that's looking for a junior and you know a job may fall in your lap but that's not the typical case and you do realize that as you interact more with the community it kind of forces you to really hone in on your skills more because there there are questions that people have you know as you like interact and build your following or follow other people there's questions that people may have to where it's like you may know it and you may okay be able to chime in and help them out and and um i think i don't know who said it but it's like you get better or you solidify things that you know by teaching it yeah so i mean i think being interactive is it's not it's not phony it's not corny i think it's a really good thing uh because it shows that you're committed to it anything you can do to really show that you're all in not just to other people but to yourself it it'll help and for me doing the twitter i just was um my mindset my goal was to be as transparent as possible uh to be real about some of my struggles so like do, towards the beginning there would be a lot of days to where i would work at the warehouse and then do some other side work that i have with my cargo van deliver some furniture set some furniture up and i wouldn't get home till like you know 10 o'clock at night a lot of times and still have to do a couple of um what are they called katas on cold wars like a couple you know solve a couple of challenges on cold wars just because just because it's that important to you i know that um a lot of the stuff you know you shouldn't be embarrassed by the basic knowledge that you have because even in your basic knowledge most people still don't know how to do this stuff no i so. know yeah well this is what uh i feel sometimes sometimes uh, i see myself like few years ago like i was learning react and i was just putting on like on medium.com and then now like i teach people react and so many things we just take for granted like i have this knowledge which i earned but i don't feel it. like man what's react right everyone knows react but in reality very tiny proportion of even developers who know react well i'm not saying i, I know react well but i mean i'm in on a process of learning it well so yeah this was a really great point like we don't share things because we feel like everybody knows it but mm-hmm. in reality very few people knows it and it is kind of sometimes your duty to share it yeah because someone helped you to reach mm-hmm. here then it is your part to find some time and share it with people not in a way like who like i'm the best person but it's more like in humble way like you do like it's it's very informative and you share like a lot of good like sometimes like i think you shared something about your mother like few few months ago and uh so these yeah. kind of things yeah uh helped a lot because the the emotions you've been feeling now there will be a point where someone else will be feeling that as well yeah it's funny that you mentioned that because i remember the first inter- the, the first any type of tech interview I ever had was a year ago. It was back in like March and both of my parents are gone and I'm, I'm 30 now. I was 29 at the time. And when I got the, uh, invite to do the, um, interview, even though I bombed it, that's the first thing I ever had tech wise. So I was really excited about it. I broke down and cried because I couldn't share that moment with my parents. And it's like people, I think people do need to see that side of it too. 
because a lot of people, I mean, it's not, it's hard enough learning how to code and it's, a, it's even harder for a lot of people dealing with everything that we're dealing with on a day to day. Yep. You see, you know, everything that's going on in the world is you see inflation, you see, you know, a lot of people are like wondering, like, how am I going to pay rent next month? You know, how do I keep how do I keep pursuing this where I need to worry about, you know, how I'm going to feed my kids next week? And, you know, part of me uh, expressing myself openly and freely is to let people know that, look. I'm in, I'm by no means in like super duper well off, but hey, if I can do it, you can too. And sometimes it's hard to think long term when you have life just staring you in the face and you have all this stuff going on. But if you can break through that threshold of getting that first job, then it'll be all worth it. No, that that was really good point. So we are about uh, at our 30 minutes mark. I ask you for 30 minutes and I'm going to end with the last question. Okay. Very easy question. What do you love and hate about your new job? I mean, not like this job, like as a software engineer, like what do you love and hate? Okay. What do I love? Uh, I think it's a gift and a curse. So it might be the same thing. <laughs> uh, I love being mentally stimulated. That's good. I hate I hate being mentally stimulated for eight hours a day. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's um yeah, so I feel like anytime you're in a position and you know you're growing and there's room for growth, that's a good thing. Growing can be hard sometimes though. So just uh yeah, I don't really hate the job or anything it's just some some uh some tickets are hard though and i'm i'm the type who i like to master things and it's kind of rough when some of these work tickets humble you and it's like man i'm not used to asking for help because i was the one that people asked me for everything in my old job now i have to ask somebody for help but yeah it's it's good and bad no, yeah, yeah. I I totally agree uh, myself. Like I like my I like my mind to be stimulated, and uh, maybe that's why I'm. I spend a lot of time on YouTube <laughs> nowadays. But yeah, that was great. It was great talking to you, and uh, I'll let you go because I know you have kids, and I know you probably have like only thirty minutes. I'm gonna take, and then you have to go back and do your. It's a Saturday, but uh, I know. Uh, but thanks a lot for taking this time. Okay, yeah, I appreciate the uh, invite. Uh, I enjoyed these 30 minutes. Serenjeet, as yeah. I said. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate it. And yeah, I just look forward to everything you have. I have been checking out some of your videos too. And no, that that's some, you got some good stuff with React. Even though, <laughs> yeah. I, even though I work in Vue, but. Oh, you work in Vue. That's yeah, okay. I, I started off learning React though. I had yeah. to learn Vue for the job. As long as long as you're doing JavaScript, we will be on the same page. Yeah, I don't yeah, know if yeah. you're like doing C plus plus someday, maybe like we like bisect. I I do want to learn C sharp. Oh, you want to learn C sharp? Okay. I want to. Oh, you you want to go into like game game development? Wait, is it C sharp? No, no. not necessarily. So C sharp, well, uh, mostly, you, you, I, I, as far as I know, you either you like that .NET development. Yeah, yeah. So you can you can do game development with C. -sharp. Yeah, I want to do the .NET development. Oh, you want to be .NET developer? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yeah. You like Microsoft? Uh, uh I I like having, I like having tools under my belt. I see a lot of good jobs with uh. Yeah. No. With the uh, .NET. Yeah, C sharp is most of the like legacy softwares they run on C sharp. Um, I started actually with Python, so I was I had uh, I did Django. And then now I'm full front end. I don't think so. I'll ever go to back end. I, I don't know, but I think I, I'm gonna stick with front end because there's so so many things you can do, right? Yeah. So for now, I, like I commit to myself, I'm not going to do anything else. I'm just sticking to uh, React next. Maybe I'll I'll 
try it swelled because that's that's like the they say that it's a better way of to, i don't know uh but still it was nice talking to you Caleb. Yeah, i don't know yeah. if i'm pronouncing your your name right how do you pronounce your name Caleb. Caleb. mm mm-hmm. okay Caleb. it was that's nice what you said right that's his collab oh wow, wow. <laughs> Caleb. a lot of people get it wrong that's fine yeah that's okay okay talk yeah. soon all right i Have appreciate it yeah you too thank you